program, I in invite the dignitaries to grace the dais. Shri S. Siddharth, Principal Secretary, Finance Department, Bihar. Shri Sushil Modi ji, Honorable Deputy Chief Minister, Bihar. Professor M. Govind Rao, Chairperson, Academic Advisory Committee, Center for Economic Policy and Public Finance. Professor Errol de Sosa, Director, IIM Ahmedabad. Professor Anjan Mukherjee, Emeritus Professor JNU, New Delhi. Dr. Shaibal Gupta, Director, Center for Economic Policy and Public Finance, Adi Patna. Professor Sukhpal Singh, uh, Professor IIM Ahmedabad will be joining with us soon. I request all the dignitaries to please grace the dais. Thank you. Honorable dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Soumya Manjunath and I have the pleasure of being your MC today. On behalf of the Center for Economic Policy and Public Finance, Asian Development Research Institute, Patna, a hearty welcome to you all to this international conference. The Center for Economic Policy and Public Finance at Adri Patna is organizing this two-day international conference titled Public Finance Theory practice and challenges to commemorate the 10th anniversary of CPPF. In this context, I wish to extend a warm welcome to all the distinguished guests, invited chairpersons, speakers, delegate participants, government functionaries, and my colleagues from Adri to this two-day conference. As a token of respect and appreciation, we would first like to welcome our esteemed guests with a bouquet. May I request Dr. Barna Ganguly to present the bouquet to Sri Sushil Modi ji. Please welcome, sir. May I now <laughs> May I now request Dr. Bakshi Amit Kumar Sinha to honor, welcome Professor Govind Rao with the bouquet. Please welcome, sir. It's an honor to welcome Professor Errol de Sosa with the bouquet. We invite uh, Sri Siddharth ji to this conference with the bouquet. Please welcome, sir. We now welcome Professor Anjan Mukherjee with the bouquet. Please welcome, sir. Thank you, Dr. Barna and Dr. Amit. We shall now start with the date's proceedings. Sri S. Siddharth, IAS, Principal Secretary, Finance Department, Bihar, will be presiding over the inaugural ceremony. Thank you, sir. We are now opening the ceremony with the welcome remarks by Dr. Shaibal Gupta, Director, Center for Economic Policy and Public Finance.
श्री सुशील कुमार मोदी जी द ऑनरेबल डेप्यूटी चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ बिहार डॉक्टर एस सिद्धार्थ द फाइनेंस सेक्रेटरी ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ बिहार एंड आल्सो चेयरमैन ऑफ सेंटर फॉर इकोनॉमिक पॉलिसी पब्लिक फाइनेंस प्रोफेसर एरोल डी सुजा डिरेक्टर इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मैनेजमेंट अहमदाबाद प्रोफेसर एम गोविंद राव चेयरपर्सन ऑफ दिस सेमिनार एडवाइजरी कमिटी ही हेज एक्चुअली He is also member of the board of CEPG. Professor Anjan Mukherjee, he is chairperson of RG as well as he is member of the board of CEP Fair. Distinguished participants in the conference, ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a proud privilege for me to welcome you all. to this international conference on public finance we all at adri have been working hard for this important conference for last several months i am so happy that d day has finally come as you know this conference is being organized to celebrate the completion of 10 successful years of center for economic policy and public finance which was established by government of bihar in adri in 2008 but apart from the joy of celebration this conference as all others is also going to be valuable learning platform for all of us as our speakers include number of outstanding scholars and practitioners in the field the challenges of public finance are now far deeper than before because thanks to the emergence of new liberalism there is now a tendency to redefine the state particularly in terms of its functions but for developing countries like india and still more for specially disadvantaged region like bihar the role of the state is still very critical here development responsibilities of the state are as important as traditional as its traditional functions during the last two days our conference will deliberate uh, on this next challenges of public finance and professor govind rao will next share you with specific objective of the conference and the way it has been planned but before professor rao informs you all about the details of the conference friends i would like to take this opportunity to share with you the background of cepppf about 25 years back when we had started adri in 1991 we had very consciously decided that adri's professional agenda will include both academic research as well as research that directly strengthens the development efforts by any organization including the state the foremost development organization during our initial years we have often pre prepared reports on the functioning of the state either at the request of the state government functionaries or on our own we have also been engaged in preparation of the memorandum by different political parties civil society organization to successive finance commissions since 1998 when the 11th finance commission had visited bihar it was therefore not surprising that in 2005 when the new government was formed in bihar Adri was asked to prepare the first economic survey of Bihar. The exercise was repeated with equal success next two years in 2006 and 2007. It was at that important point that the state government had decided 
to establish the Center for Economic Policy and Public Finance at RG in 2008 and entrust with a number of other academic responsibilities to strengthen the management of public finance in the state as well as its development administration apart from the preparation of the economic survey. Now in 2018, we have completed 10 years of our successful functioning and hence this celebration. Looking back, I must say that our success has indeed been a result of hard work as well as cooperation from state government, particularly the Department of Finance. Additionally, we have been mindful of receiving feedback on our various reports from established professionals in the field. For example, we got the economic survey of 2010, evaluated by Professor Dilip Nachane, a renowned economist. He had highly appreciated its form and content and also offered some valuable suggestion. During the last 10 years, other distinguished scholars have visited CEPV, including Nobel laureate Professor Amit Sen and Joseph Stiglitz. In 2015, CEPV had also organized an auction workshop on economic survey uh, where such surveys of seven Indian states were reviewed. The workshop was attended by Dr. Arvind Subramaniam, the then chief economic advisor to the central government. The suggestions emerging from the workshops were also incorporated in the subsequent economic surveys. As I, as I mentioned before, the proper functioning of CEPPF has been possible thanks to the cooperation of many and most important of them being Department of Finance in particular and other departments of the state government in general. The extensive interaction between the faculty members of CEPPF and the state government functionaries have in my opinion benefited the both. At one end, the faculty members are now more knowledgeable about the challenges of development administration in Bihar. Their knowledge is now not limited to secondary data alone. At the other end, most of the departments of the state government are now ready with more data on their functioning, covering both financial and physical dimensions. Admittedly, the data base on different departments is now even less than comprehensive but it has certainly been improving over the years. It is because of our wide interaction with the state government functionaries and our knowledge about development challenges in Bihar that Adri is now regarded as one of the leading research organizations in the country. Finally, let me also inform you that impressed with the academic performance of Adri, Many development agencies have found it useful to collaborate with RG for their own agenda. One such collaboration is the Center for Health Policy, which has been sponsored by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. This center was established in 2017, and within a span of less than two years, it has already produced a number of research papers which analyze the functioning of health sector in Bihar. Similarly, the Union Ministry of Forest and Environment was also established an envy center at RG this year. Later, RG was established the Center for Energy, Environment and Climate Change. The CECC now looks both envy center as well as number of other projects related to climate change. Yet another unit Yet another unit at RG is the International Growth Center, which promotes demand-based research input to the state government. IGC has also contributed towards organization of this conference. As some of you might be knowing, RG was recognized by Indian Council of Social Science Research as one of its members in 2016 reinforcing our credibility 
as a leading research institute. Overall, we are now trying to address a range of developmental issues, either through CEPPF or other research units. Friends, I have already welcomed you all right at the beginning of my address, but let me now be more specific. I must first welcome Sri Shushil Modi ji, the Honorable Deputy Chief Minister of Bihar. He is with us not only this morning, but he has been so right from inception days of CEPP. When in 2008, the state government had decided to establish CEPP, it was he who had approved the idea as a finance minister. During the last 10 years, he has been source of inspiration for us, both as a finance minister in his personal capacity. I am indeed grateful that he will kindly give the inaugural address this morning. Uh, I should have invited Dr. Vaivi Reddy. Unfortunately, his flight is delayed. He will be delivering the 10th Adri, uh, 10th uh, CEPPF uh, anniversary address today. As a part of this inaugural address, we are going to have special lecture by Professor Erol Disuja presently the director of prestigious Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad. I extend our hearty welcome to him. His scholarship is as well known, and I'm sure we all are going to be immensely benefited from his lecture on policy, on monetary policy in this inaugural session. The CEPPF, as you might know, is an autonomous unit within Nadri. It has a board of directors of its own, and its present chairperson, Dr. A. Siddharth, Principal Secretary of Finance, is also with us this morning. He is, it is my pleasure to welcome him among us. He is also expert on public finance, and I think his PhD was on, uh, Treasury. on Treasury. I think we'll have a first chairman who is an uh, expert on public finance. Let me also welcome Professor Govind Rao, whose best introduction is possibly the last word on public finance in India. As you all know, he has, until recently, the director of National Institute of Public Finance and Policy and member of the 14th Finance Commission. We are extremely grateful that he chairs the Academic Advisory Committee of this international conference. Uh, Dr. Professor uh, Anjan Mukherjee needs no introduction. He's one of the towering figures in the world of uh, economics. Finally, let me welcome all the scholars who will either deliver special lectures or present their paper on, co on the conference. I sincerely hope that they really enjoy the deliberation during the next two days. Before I conclude, I must confess that for the last 10 years, since the CPPF was established, uh, I, was, I was suffering from various ailments and I was in and out of uh, hospital. But the man who, and I was the DGO director, but the man who was the de facto director was Dr. P.P. Ghosh. And he has single-handedly steered CEPPF for the last 10 years in a magnificent manner. I must pay my tribute to him. And he has guided all the academics in CEPPF in a very well manner. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Gupta, for your welcome remarks. We are honored this morning to welcome Professor M. Govind Rao, Chairperson, Academic Advisory Committee, Center for Economic Policy and Public Finance, to say a few words about the conference. Please welcome, sir.
Shri Sushil Kumar Modi Ji, the Honorable Deputy Chief Minister, Dr. Shaibal Gupta, the Director of ADRI, Dr. Siddharth, the Principal Secretary of Finance, Dr. Anjan Mukherjee, my good friend and possibly the last word on economic theory. Uh, Dr. Sukhpal Singh, Dr. Rirol De Souza, distinguished uh, invitees, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> it's indeed an honor and privilege for me to my, add my own words of welcome to all of you for this uh, international conference on the occasion of the completion of 10 years of fruitful contribution to public finance by Asian Development Research Institute. Um, the Center for uh, Economic and Policy and Public Finance, which is uh, a very, which has continued to be a very important component of uh, the ADRI, has been doing a human service <coughs> um, in terms of uh, raising, uh, not only doing research, and advocacy and raising awareness of uh, the, the various uh, fiscal issues confronting the state. Over the last 10 years, the Institute has made tremendous contribution to research as well as advocacy. The institution has assisted the government with quality research inputs and advisors as and when called for. Its most important contribution year after year, as was mentioned by Dr. Shabal Gupta, has been the trademark economic survey as a part of the budget document. This was prepared by the Institute at the behest of the state government. It goes to the credit of both the Institute and the state government that they have found the need for each other. And this has happened irrespective of the changes in the government. I would also compliment and thank the state government for providing unstinted support to this institution and nursing its growth. I hope it will continue to support the institute as it graduates from being a toddler to a teenager and later to an adult in the years to come. And in fact, this institution is one of those uh, things that happened in the, you know, when the economy of Bihar started growing possibly at the fastest rate, you know, after 2006, 2007. In fact, um, you know, Arvind Panagadi and I had put together a book called the Making Miracles in Indian States um, and um, very well researched work by Dr. Anjan Mukherjee and Arna Mukherjee on the, on the, the entire growth process in Bihar. Um, and, you know, going back to the history and then trying to identify the factors responsible and you know, which, which provides a very good, uh, this thing. And this institute actually is a product of that uh, process where, uh, you know, informed decision making was found to be necessary. This international conference is on public finance, but it stretches a little beyond the narrow confines of Richard Musgrave's textbook characterization of its three branches, allocation, stabilization, and redistribution. It's somewhat in keeping with Mus Musgrave's concept of merit goods. In fact, you can fit in anything with merit goods. Um, you know, most, most government intervention can be justified on the ground of merit goods. And um, James Buchanan in the symposium in the University of Munich says he doesn't understand what merit good is. There are papers dealing with the role of the state which defines the scope of public finance and building state capacity which requires to be augmented to deal with market failures. In fact, the ecosystem for development depends upon the ability to, of the state to deal with what Manser Olson calls roving bandits and go beyond as a stationary bandits. There are also papers on macroeconomic policies, particularly monetary and fiscal policy interactions. However, macroeconomic stabilization is predominantly a central government function and redistribution, particularly poverty elevation, has to be financed by the center but implemented by the subnational governments. 
there are important contributions on policy, on tax policy, and particularly the recent implementation of GST. There are questions, there are fundamental questions raised in the papers in the, you know, which will follow uh, on the desirability of GST itself. And that's, you know, makes us think on variety of, you know, think on, um, you know, the basic issues of uh, GST. However, the institute being located in the state and supporting its policies, there is much greater focus in the conference on allocation, particularly on the health sector, including the recent Big Bang reform, Ayushman Bharat. I would have liked to see some more articles on the reform of education sector, because that too is critically important in a state like Bihar. And hopefully, that will be an agenda as mentioned earlier, it is um, heartening to see a galaxy of uh, very reputed scholars assembled here. And that shows the great respect they have for the human service Dr. Shaibal Gupta and his colleagues, led by Dr. P.P. Ghosh, who has been the backbone of the institute. It is not easy to get all these scholars, all of you, all these scholars in one place, and I am particularly thankful to them. It is also heartening to see many young and upcoming scholars with interesting papers, and I am sure there will be lively discussions on them and they will stand to gain. Hopefully, most of the people who are young will return to present papers again when the institution achieves its adulthood. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Ra, for sharing your views about the conference. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Professor Errol de Sosa, Director, Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad, to deliver the special lecture. The title of the lecture is Fiscal Dominance and Monetary Policy. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Uh, respected Sushil Modi ji, uh, Professor Shaibal Gupta, who, congratulations on achieving this landmark event and uh, of having 10 years of this wonderful organization contributing to public finance and policy in the state and the country at large. Uh, Professor Govind Rao, uh, Professor Anjan Mukherjee, who I consider my intellectual guru, uh, and uh, Dr. S. Siddharth. Uh, I think Bihar is actually, Mr. Modi, Bihar is really in very good hands. He is a product of IIM Ahmedabad, and I think if the finance secretary is from IIM Ahmedabad, there's lots that he is going to deliver. Uh, so I uh, and also Dr. P.P. Gupta, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. People were wondering what I'm doing talking about monetary policy in a conference on public finance. And I'm actually going to be reiterating what is well known to macroeconomists, but somehow been forgotten over the years that uh, monetary policy is actually uh, a subset of what we used to call intertemporal public finance. That uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, the two organs of the state, which is the central bank and the Ministry of Finance, deal with different ends of, uh, you know, of the markets. The uh, central bank is actually dealing on the liquid end of the market. And there were good reasons to call it into question because the response to the crisis was actually with joint policy actions, both organs of the state, the central bank, as well as the fiscal authority did what they could to pump prime the economy back. Okay. The central banks started to do what fiscal authorities do. They started to buy 
quanti large quantities of private assets unknown in the previous period. And so they were in a sense engaging in a dimension of fiscal policy. And as balance sheets of central banks grew, uh, people started asking questions okay, about, you know, are the, are the central banks solvent? 